How does the vegan determine that their life is worth more than the mice and moles sacrificed in their crops? Dude, seriously, another crop death argument. But perhaps the guy with the best mug ever has a point. Hello and welcome to a little bit different video today. We will react to a video from the YouTube channel Re Ration Rationality Rules or Stephen Woodford. Veganism will win, but you're wrong about why. In which he argues that, well, veganism is nice and all, but we don't really have an ethical and firm grounding on why we should be vegan. But it won't be because I buy the ethical vegan argument. It won't be because our circle of altruism should extend to all sentient beings. And veganism simply isn't entailed by this. So let's get right into it. First of all, Stephen was so kind as to improve on the vegan argument, so we will play a section of him constructing the vegan argument here. Given this, let's drop the former part. We shouldn't harm animals unnecessarily. Agreed. Lastly, let's switch the word animals with sentient beings, as it's the capacity to experience feelings and sensations that's of specific relevance, not the kingdom a being belongs to. Fair enough. So it's not the consumption of animal products in and of itself that causes harm, but rather the deliberate acquisition of products from sentient beings that causes harm. I mean, I can roll with that. Now, I use the words deliberate acquisition because it carries the connotation of consciously and intentionally obtaining the product, and not necessarily with currency. Premise 3. The consumption of animal products is unnecessary. Yeah, seems unnecessary to me. Assuming that by necessary we mean that something is required for us to continue living, this premise is tethered to one's socio-economic and geographic environment. And in the same vein, this objection also applies to dietary needs. If one has nutritional needs that can only be obtained from animal produce, then they're justified in consuming the produce that provides it with the least amount of suffering caused. Which again, typically isn't factory farm cows, is it, Harris? Why make it easy on myself? I think I start to like this guy. <laughs> And another consideration here is mental health. Just as some atheists act as if they're theists due to the threat of their family and community ostracizing them, someone who's convinced of veganism might nevertheless consume animal produce simply to maintain relations, because they're emotionally and perhaps physically tethered to others. And finally, and for the same reasons as just covered in relation to premise 2, let's replace consumption with the words deliberate acquisition and animal products with products from sentient beings. On first glance, we would agree with that argument, or the improvement of the vegan argument. So let's get to his objection. With that, I'll now explain why I don't find this compelling argument convincing. Not vegan. All right, well, I reject premise one. Wait, you're serious? <laughs> and for two reasons. Let's spell out the first. As vegans are well aware, vegan diets raise many moral questions of their own, and one such question is this. What does it mean to say that the deliberate acquisition of a product is necessary? Necessary for what? To again quote Doggett, If it is wrong to hurt chickens for me, is it wrong to hurt mice and moles while harvesting crops? Yeah, here we go, another crop death argument. If it is wrong to harm workers in the production of meat, isn't it wrong to harm workers in the production of tomatoes? If it is wrong to use huge quantities of water for meat, isn't it wrong to use huge quantities of water for almonds? So again, the question is, what does it mean to say that a product is necessary? Is it to live? And if so, to what degree? Is it to live a fully healthy life, or just to live at the cost of, perhaps, a reduction of optimum performance and lifespan? Or at least a reduction in some of the foods we enjoy that are technically vegan, such as almonds? Like, seriously, where's the line here? And more importantly, how does one justify this line? Stephen argues that in the premise that we should not cause unnecessary harm to non-human animals, the term of necessity is too vague. Why are you being vague, man? How am I being vague? I'm giving y'all... I know, I said exactly where it was at. You vague as fuck. And therefore, we cannot decide what we should or should not do. Well, we would argue it's not necessary to have a definite term for necessity. For most people, in most cases, it is unnecessary to eat animal products. And therefore, veganism would still be the answer. What I mean with this is that it doesn't matter how we define necessity. It is not necessary to eat animal products for survival. But it's also not necessary to eat it for our healthy or and a fulfilled lifestyle, as well as financial security or even the enjoyment that we find in food. 
his first premise obviously wouldn't apply to situations where it would be necessary for survival, like the classic argument of a deserted island. What would a vegan eat on a desert island? Fucking sand. There's your answer. Or if we talk about um, cultures like the Inuit. But this is not what the argument aims for. This argument helps us to establish a general utilitarian... Oh, that's, that word's gonna suck. <laughs> 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 uh, a general utilitarian rule that helps us to reduce suffering in cases where it is clear that there is greater suffering in play through the consumption of animal products. It is clear, if not health, finances, or one's life is at stake, our taste pleasure does not supersede the pain of the animal. The thing is, while it is not necessary for us to define what necessity means to reduce suffering in general, Stephen still makes a good argument for uh, us not having a firm ethical grounding that encompasses more cases and does not require arbitrary utilitarian rules. As far as I can tell, this definition is completely arbitrary. It simply assumes that, in principle, it's perfectly fine to maintain one human life at the expense of infinite harm caused to infinite beings, just so long as there's no alternative method of maintaining the human's life without such harm. But to get back to the central point, the main takeaway is that the implicit premise, the premise that something is unnecessary if it isn't required for humans to continue living, just isn't justified at all. It's a presupposition. And because it's not justified, we don't have a justified means of convincing others to adopt this specific arbitrary premise over other and equally arbitrary premises, such as something being unnecessary if it isn't required to advance human well-being. So let us adjust the argument accordingly to make it more consistent. Premise 1. We should minimize the suffering of sentient beings. Premise 2. The deliberate acquisition of products from sentient beings causes net suffering to sentient beings. Conclusion. We should not deliberately acquire products from sentient beings. Well, most vegans claim that they deliberately acquire products that harm sentient beings because it's necessary for them, as an individual, to live. Now, the following question might seem a little strange, but it's absolutely a fair philosophical query. How does the vegan determine that their life is worth more than the mice and moles sacrificed in their crops? If the avoidance of harm is so paramount, why does one human life supersede a thousand mice or a million insects? Stephen makes a good point here, one that we should not confuse with an appeal to futility fallacy or a crop death argument. And I've already explained that I wasn't endorsing the crop death though argument. I brought it up in both cases, not as an argument or objection to veganism, but merely to substantiate the premise that all diets necessitate death. Rather, Stephen argues that we are inconsistent and in that we arbitrarily define that humans are more important than these animals that leave their lives for our sustenance. And by using the improved argument using well-being as a metric, we are somewhat committed to commit suicide. Why does one human life supersede a thousand mice or a million insects? Or we have to accept an arbitrary human supremacist premise that we are somewhat more important than the animals we slaughter for our sustenance. To take this route is to engage in human supremacy. Even if it is only about crop deaths. So Stephen's argument goes as follows. Premise 1. We should minimize the suffering of sentient beings. Premise 2. The deliberate acquisition of products that are necessary to our survival harm more animals than they benefit humans. Conclusion. Humans should not deliberately acquire products that are necessary to their survival. The first argument I want to bring up is the argument from insufficient knowledge. How do we determine that our lives are more important than that of those animals we kill through crop deaths? Well, maybe we don't know if this causes more suffering in general. Maybe humans have higher capacities to experience and us starving will deprive us of this pleasure. Or the first one I would like to bring up is one about insufficient knowledge. How do we justify killing those animals just to sustain one human life? Well, maybe we don't know if it causes more human suffering than animal suffering. And if this is the case, how do we answer the question using the argument? The thing is, we can't. So to answer the question for cases where we don't know what to do, we have to modify the argument again. Premise one, we should minimize the suffering of sentient beings that we are reasonably confident about. 
Premise 2. We are not yet reasonably confident that necessary crop deaths cause net suffering to sentient beings. Conclusion. We should not yet prevent necessary crop deaths until we are reasonably confident. On the other hand, we are reasonably confident that vegan diets will cause less suffering than non-vegan diets will. Honestly, I think it's philosophical masturbation to argue that the deliberate acquisition of products from sentient beings doesn't harm sentient beings. You are not justified in not being vegan because you cause more suffering than you cause pleasure to yourself. This is also an objection to one of the things Stephen mentions later in the video, that almost anyone in human history was a moral monster for committing the crimes they did in the past. In fact, it's worse than this. How have most human beings so utterly failed to even recognize their obligations? And how are people today, alive, right now, still failing to recognize their obligations? I mean, Jesus fucking Christ, if this assessment is correct, then we are truly moral monsters. But using this logic, we can say that some people, at least, didn't have the sufficient knowledge to act ethically. But for those who do have the sufficient knowledge, you, Stephen, you should go vegan, because you know that you cause more suffering than you cause pleasure. Honestly, I think it's philosophical masturbation. You are accountable for your actions. If the world keeps going the way it's going, I'll probably be vegan within the year. I think I start to like this guy. But what if we were certain that crop death would entail more suffering than the death of humans because of starvation, like Alex O'Connor mentions in his podcast? If we want to conclude from that that they have sufficiently worse or more intense experiences than us to warrant um, them being called worth more morally than us, yeah. then we really would be committed to a view of probably removing ourselves from the planet as quickly as possible. Well, according to the argument that Ansgar just made, we would circle back to the conclusion that humans should rather starve to death than eat plants that include crop deaths. But what would actually happen if vegans would start living in consistency with that conclusion? Well, we would argue that this was not, would not lead to a world with less suffering. Because only vegans would start living in consistency with this logic, and therefore humanity would go on existing, while the vegan meme would die out. With vegan meme, I don't mean this. Although it would be horrific if vegan memes would disappear from social media sites, in this context, a meme is a unit of cultural information spread by imitation. The term meme was introduced in 1976 by the British evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins in his work The Selfish Gene. With the vegans slowly dying out because of starvation and the vegan meme therefore slowly disappearing, all while humanity is going on with their everyday life, we would see an increase in animal suffering through a higher consumption of animal products and therefore also more crop deaths that exist because of the harvesting of the crops that are used for animal feed. The argument would be as follows. Premise 1. We should minimize the suffering of sentient beings that we are reasonably confident about. Premise 2. We are reasonably confident that crop deaths cause net suffering to sentient beings compared to the pleasure of the consumer. Premise 3. We are reasonably confident that the disappearance of the vegan meme without the disappearance of humanity would cause more crop deaths and additional animal suffering. Premise 4. The vegan meme disappears if vegans starve themselves to death without humanity disappearing. Conclusion. Vegans should not starve themselves to death. However, let us take a more extreme example to test this new argument. What if vegans were to acquire nuclear codes? Should we end the world? Because using the previous argument, if we have no humans left, then there will be no crop deaths and no suffering thereof. So shouldn't we just go right ahead and push the button? Well, following the structure of the argument then, premise four is nullified and reversed. So we should end human civilization. Well, as Anton has pointed out the idea of the vegan meme, and you, Stephen, have pointed out Peter Singer's expanding circle. The expansion of the moral circle should therefore be pushed out until it includes most animals. Singer is singing in the tone of utilitarianism here. We got one thing to consider. If our species dies, our moral progress will die, 
our questioning. In recent millennia, humans have been asking why. Our ability to transcend our evolutionary principles will disappear. The circle of altruism has broadened from the family and tribe to the nation and race, and we are beginning to recognize that our obligations extend to all human beings. The world will be filled with wild animal suffering, and at some points, something like humans will reappear. Evolution will not stop. Maybe we should stay alive, not only to be vegan, but reduce animal suffering further by reducing wild animal suffering, reduce the suffering of the people on this planet. We have a unique opportunity to use science and technology to make the best of life on Earth. So Stephen, we thank you for your thought out video. You might not agree with my position, but I think you'll appreciate it. You'll at least find it consistent. We appreciate your openness to response. And if you think I'm mistaken, let me know. If I'm mistaken in my assessment, I want to know. The very reason I'm vegetarian as opposed to, say, pescatarian is because I'm sensitive to the arguments. And we hope you're well. And with that, we are open to hearing any kind of criticism towards our chain of arguments. Thanks for watching.